Um, amazing. When I said to Emma, I need you to buy me two seconds so that I can get my camera on. I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> it, it wasn't that. Uh, good morning. Welcome. My name is Ben. It's so great uh, to have you with us here in this new venue. Who is excited for this? Anyone else? I've been excited all summer. It is so good. Um, and I just want to start as well by saying a couple of thank yous. Uh, firstly, thank you to all the different people who have turned up at 8 o'clock in the morning to grab stuff from cinemas, who have helped setting up and practice and all of those things. Uh, if you have made this somehow easier, somehow made this happen, I just want to say a massive thank you. And I, I also want to say, yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's all thank those people because they've left every one of us. The second group of people I want to thank are all of you just for having an adventurous spirit. I'm so, so glad that we're not the kind of church that when the plan shifts and we have to do different things that it's like, oh, it's a disaster. But you're like, yeah, let's go for it. Maybe God is in this. Let's have an adventure. Let's see what's happening. And so I'm so pleased that you have lent in and I really, really appreciate that. Thank you. This is going to be for the next... I don't know how long, month or so, two months or so, three months, who knows. This is a work in progress. And we are partnering with Jesus in this. We believe that he has walked ahead of us. And so our job isn't to try and fix everything, it's to try and ask the question, what are you doing here, Jesus, and how do you get into that? And so if you can lean in, if you can help in any way, please do. If you're a praying person, please pray particularly around the school. I'd love it if the school said, yeah, you can use that for the kids' ministry. It would just be perfect. Uh, so pray for that. But it's going to be fun. It's going to be an adventure. And I'm still excited for what's to come. I've been all summer. As we've been away uh, on the beach or climbing mountains, there's just been this little excited buzz in the back of my head. Like, I can't wait till September comes. We get into St. Thomas's and see what God's going to do. And... Um, I want to start today with a new series, a new thought, a new idea, I guess, uh, and it's all about friendship. I don't know about you, but I've been looking recently, and I think that the world has changed massively over the last few years. Now, the pandemic has come, and after the pandemic, we've had mental health crises, we've talked about this so much, people struggling more than ever, we've got the financial impact. I did my car insurance. I've got an extra note claimed here and it was twice the price as last year. What's that about? People are telling me that their mortgages are going up by hundreds. It's tough, isn't it? It's a hard time for everybody in different ways. But, bar none, the part of us that I'm most worried about is not my camera. That's, I'm not worried about that. It is, you're fine, I'm joking. Um, the part that I'm most concerned about for us and for society is the way that we relate to one another. It's our friendships. Um, <clears throat> what, I've, what I've come to realise, or what at least I've heard again and again and again from people, is that people seem to be finding it harder now to make friends than at any time that I can remember. And it makes sense in a way if you think about the pandemic, that we spent all of that time isolated, not trusting people, stay away, masks and all of that. And I think that we expected it all to go back to normal and everyone to bounce back, but it, it just hasn't. We have, people haven't bounced back. I've been reading so much in the papers. I read this week about students at university who are going and they're studying and they're saying that they feel more isolated now than they did when we were in lockdown. We hear about loneliness. We hear about all of these troubles that people are having to connect. And I hear it inside the church too. I spoke to somebody just this week, and she was saying that she moved to Manchester 12 months ago. She still hasn't got a friend. She's a confident person. She turns up every single week. She's leaning into friendships, and yet there's something which isn't quite clicking, it isn't quite connecting. Now, I think that I've heard this at Soul City as well. People have come to me and said, look, Ben, it's not as easy, and I'm trying, and I'm turning up, and yet I don't really feel like I'm at the center of things. I don't feel part of it. And that, that's sad, and that's hard, and that's rubbish, and that's not okay. And I think that there's many things that we can do about that. 
I think that we can change venue and part of my hope for St. Thomas's is that it'll be better here than it was at the cinema for making friendships. I mean, that cinema was great for that moment when you were inviting your mates and say, come to church, we're in a cinema. And they're just like, what do you mean you're in a cinema? That's fun. But, but here, it's bright. We don't have that dark moment at the end of the service when you're all stuck in rows and it's hard and it's awkward. Hopefully, this will be better. We've also got the, the wonderful Rachel who has started as a community coordinator. I'm so excited for her. She's literally just getting going, but... But she's going to be doing so much work, bringing people together, helping people to connect. So if you've got ideas now, you can go to Rachel. And uh, she will be the one who says, good idea, I will think about it. Um, but I'm so excited for that. But more than anything, I think that we have an opportunity to talk about it. And not just kind of talk about it as a one-off sermon, hey, we should be better friends. We're going to deep dive, we're going to talk this through, we're going to go into detail and explore how we do friendships better. And I think that we can, and I think that there's things that we can learn, there's muscles that we can stretch, because friendship is really, really important. So what do you think about when you think about friendship? Uh, if you're around my age, maybe you think of Friends, the TV series, you know. So no one told you that was gonna be this way. Yeah, exactly. So maybe that's your best picture of friendship. Or maybe you think to an experience you had somewhere, like a mission trip, and you became like a band of brothers or a band of sisters, or you just, you just clicked, or maybe you've been in another community, and you look back and you're like, well, when I was in India, we connected so well, and England just doesn't really get community like we. Maybe you have that kind of experience, and that's what you think about. Maybe you think back to school, and you had your BFF, your bestie, and you think about that when you think about friendship. I think we all have these beautiful pictures of what friendship can be. But whoever you are, I believe that we are all created to love and to be loved. We're all created for community. We're created to connect with people. Some of us do it differently. Some of us are like social butterflies. We've got friends everywhere we go. Some of us do it far more deeply. But we all need friendship. When you look back at your life, at the happiest, most fulfilling moments, they're always with other people. If you look back at the hardest, lowest moments, there are always the times when you needed more people. We were created for connections. And I think that we see this all the way through the Bible as well. Like right from the beginning in Genesis, God creates this world, he creates the stars, he creates the seas, he creates the land. And he says, let's make man, let's make mankind in our image. We worship a God who from the start, before anything else, was a three-in-one God. He's a Trinitarian God. He is a God of friendship. He is a God of relationship. The author and pastor John Holmes says this. He says, the Trinity is the most fundamental expression of community and relationship. Therefore, one of the simplest yet most profound aspects of mankind being made in God's image is that we were designed to live in relationships. We were created for connection, we were created for community. And we could look at this theologically, but we could also look at this practically and scientifically. One of my good friends, Phil, has just written a book on friendship, and he shared three observations with me, which I found fascinating. He said that the first thing that happens when you're around friends is that you get a burst of oxytocin. Oxytocin is a chemical inside your body which gives you this warm, fuzzy feeling. It's what you get when you sit around a campfire with your mates and maybe you sing songs. It's what you get when you go to the pub and you just connect with someone really, really well. It's what you get when you see someone on a train and you know them and you can just sit with them. You get this feeling of oxytocin. Oxytocin is what tells us that we can trust people. We can trust people with our secrets. We can just knock on their door and trust them to let us in and make us a cup of coffee. That's the first thing that happens when we build friendships. We get oxytocin. The second thing that happens is we get a rise in cortisol. Cortisol 
is in our bodies and it's a chemical that regulates blood pressure. When you're around people, you might think they stress you out, but scientifically, they lower your blood pressure. They help you deal with harder things in life. And if you don't have close friends, you find that your cortisol levels become out of control. We need friends. And the third thing he says that we get are endorphins. These are the neurochemicals that help us deal with pain. Endorphins are what you get if you're a runner and you're running and your body hurts and yet you love it. That's endorphins. What they found out scientifically is that your body produces endorphins when you're around people that you really, really love. And so it's one thing saying God created us for friendship, but when we look scientifically, our bodies and our psyches are hardwired to be around people. That's why it hurts so much when we feel rejected, because our brain can't differentiate the difference between physical pain and social pain. It literally hurts like being punched in the face when someone hurts you because you need friendships. We need friendships and yet people are saying that they find it harder than ever before. We need to work out how to have friendships. And I think that friendships are challenging and I think that there's a reason why they're challenging. In fact, I think there's three reasons why they're challenging. In the Bible in Ephesians 2.2 2, it says this, it says, once you were dead because of your disobedience, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers of the unseen world. He's a spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following our passionate desires and our sinful nature. What he is saying in his very Paul-esque, weird, difficult, theological way is, that all of us are facing three battles in our lives. He says there's three battles that are coming against you and connecting with people the way that you want to. The first one is a battle with the world. And when I say the world, I don't mean like, let's be militant people down with society, we hate the world. I'm not saying let's hate culture and civilization, boo to music, boo to art. It's not talking about that. What it's talking about is culture. And we have a culture that is set up to make it harder for us to have friendships. When we look back in history, one of the reasons why they had such good relationships is because their culture was a more social culture than ours is today. Back even a hundred years ago, most jobs that people had were far more practical, they were far more physical. Whereas there's been a shift over the last hundred years where now a lot of us are working in fields which is psychological and emotional. What that means is that when we get home from the end of the day at work, we just do not want to hang out with people because we're emotionally tired. Our culture makes us tired emotionally. We've got screens, we've got Netflix, we've got social media. I heard a little while ago that Netflix have put out a quote saying that their biggest competitor was sleep itself. That's what they're battling with. They're trying to make it so that we maybe don't need to sleep as much so that we can consume more content. We have a culture which pulls us to the cinema screen, to the TV screen, to the phone screen, and all of these tiny little dopamine fixes as we get notifications stop us from connecting with real people. I find it fascinating that today more kids are concerned about their parents' screen times than the other way around. Isn't that weird? Isn't that wrong? We need to connect face to face, not thumb to thumb. The world, the culture that we live in makes it harder. The second battle that we have is a battle of the flesh. And really that's just our bodies, that we get tired, that we, we're stretched and stressed financially. We're stretched and stressed practically. We're stretched and stressed in all these different ways. And finally, the third battle is the spiritual one. John Mark Homer says that the devil's first goal is to isolate us. You were created for community. And there is an enemy. And that enemy's goal is to kill, steal, and destroy. And you will always know when that is happening because the first thing that will happen is you'll find yourself finding it harder and harder to connect, harder and harder to lean in, more and more isolated. 
See, Paul says it in Corinthians like this. He says, you can have all the gifts. You can sing like an angel, which sometimes it sounds like <laughs> Lucy has that gift. You, you, can, you can speak amazing words. You can serve. You can be the best at everything. And yet, without love, you're just a noise. You're just a presence. He's saying love is at the center. Like the Beatles say, love is all you need. And we mean that spiritually and physically and scientifically. We were created to connect. And so we need to learn how to do this. And that's what we're going to do over these next few weeks. Uh, we're going to look at different spheres of friendship. I've got on the screen here, hopefully, um, some circles of friendship. There's a guy called Dunbar. And what he did was he said that he felt that one of the big challenges was that we expect all of our friends to be the same. That we expect everybody to be the same kind of friend and then we're expecting communities to act like best friends to us. And then we're frustrated when we don't have that connection. And he said that there's different friendship circles that we all experience. Intimates, which he says are 1.5. Don't worry, he's not saying you're gonna have half a friend. What he means by that is, that some people are married, and that would probably be their most close friendship. Some people have a best friend. Some people are married and have a best friend. 1.5, you're probably somewhere in the middle of that. The next one he says are your close friends. These are the people who are there for you in thick and thin. Then you've got your best friends. There's probably about 15 of those. Uh, this is the kind of birds of a feather flock together kind of things. They're people who tend to have a lot in common with you. You've then got the 50 who are your good friends, and then at 150, he says, that's your friendship capacity. That's as many people as you can psychologically connect with. It's why so many churches get to about 120 and just stop growing, because you can't connect with people beyond that. After that, you become acquaintances, which is where you know their name, but you don't really know anything about them, or you become no names, no that's wrong, no faces is the last one, where you're like, oh I recognise you, you're that person who I see around. But he says what's important is that every single level has a value, and we need to learn how to treat each level differently. Jesus was similar, I find it amazing how Jesus did it, Jesus did it a little bit like this, he had his best friend, who was John, the disciple Jesus loved, he had an inner circle, he had his 12 disciples, he had a community of 72. And then he had crowds. And he didn't expect the same thing of each of them. And so over the next month, two months, we're going to look at each of these different cycles. We're going to look at these different ways that we engage. We're going to talk about how to find great friends. We're going to talk about unfriending. Those people who are just bad for you. And you need to learn how to let go and create some distance. We're going to talk about generational friendship. We're going to talk about loneliness, particularly men and women and how we connect differently. We're going to talk about intercultural friendships and how race affects this. And we're going to deep dive because there's so many different things that we can talk about and we can connect better in so many different ways. I am talking to all of these people. Do you want to say hello very quickly? Hi. Well done, Chester. Um, and so, so we're going to spend this time, but, but I just want to ask, I'm going to ask the band to come up because we're going to worship. I just want to ask you, as we do this, I've got two things that I want to encourage you, I want to challenge you to do. The first one is I want you to be present. I want you over the next two months to challenge yourself to be present. Be present with the people around you. Looking at that list, like, be present at different groups. Where do you need most to be present? Next week, we've got a bring and share lunch. Be present. Turn up. Don't be on your phones. Lean in. Let's make it a challenge. We're going to be present over, present over the next couple of weeks. And then the second thing that I want to challenge you is to be proactive. I think that friendships are they're like a muscle. You can stretch them and it's it's challenging right because every relationship is a two-way street and so you can want to be friends with somebody and if they don't reciprocate there's nothing that you can do about that you can't make somebody be more relational but we can all each of us make a decision to be proactive 
to say, do you know what, I want to be in the kind of community where we really are close. We really are the family. We really are the best of friends. I want to be that kind of person. I was just thinking this morning about Chris, who is the vicar, who uh, he leads this church normally when we're not in here. It's his church. And I don't know Chris. I've met him a few times, and he has just embodied friendship. He has been warm, he has been generous, he has been kind, he has been open. I want to be more like Chris. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be more like the kind of friend that people around me need. And so I want to challenge you, let's be present, let's be proactive, let's be persistent. And the truth is that there's going to be a lot of us who find friendship hard. And so why don't we make a decision even now to go the extra mile? Invite someone round for food. When Emma and I moved to Manchester, we made the decision that Thursday night was friendship night. And every Thursday we had someone over for dinner. They didn't all become our best friends, but I tell you what, it made all the difference. Just doing something. Being proactive, being persistent, and being present. Let's stand, I'm going to pray, and we're going to just spend some time worshipping. And then, because only 50% of the kids came up and wanted a microphone or, or something, we've got an amazing treat after the service, which is there's going to be an ice cream van coming with free ice cream for everybody. Doesn't matter how old you are, you're a kid in this situation. So at the end, we're going to have that. We're going to worship first. Now let me pray. Lord God, I thank you that you are a relational God. I thank you that you wanted to befriend us. I thank you that you created us for connection. And Lord, I pray. I pray that you teach us something in these next couple of months that helps us to find a deeper level of fulfillment, a deeper level of peace. Lord, that you raise our oxytocin and cortisol and all of those chemicals but that we have trust, that we have love. I pray for every single one of us. We can't always know where we're going to have friends, but we can always be a friend. Lord, challenge us, encourage us, inspire us. We give this time to you in your name, Jesus.